Hello, everyone. Welcome back to the Sports Fall Jersey. Joe Archino back here, and the NCAA tournament is upon us. And this is the kind of year where I think the uncertainty is at the highest degree that it's really ever been in. I really, when you look at it realistically, yes, there's always upsets. There's always things that break people's brackets. But from a realistic standpoint, the teams who win these the, the tournament normally can be expected. I mean, we go just go down the list. You look even just we'll go back in recent memory to 2010. Duke, Connecticut, Kentucky, Louisville, Connecticut, and then Duke again have won the tournament. And certainly, if you had said to anybody during any of those stretches that that was the program that would have won would not have been a shocker. Mostly, there are about five teams that usually win, and it's it's expected. But this is the kind of year where there's I've never seen a season with so much uncertainty, where the number one teams, where the identifiable best teams, have changed so frequently. And because of that, this really opens it up, and this makes it maybe the hardest tournament of my lifetime, certainly, to pick who the winner is going to be, just because I think you look at every team here. I think you look at all the number one seeds, all the twos. I think you look at one to five, and all of them have identifiable weaknesses, things that could be exploited. It could take, and, and that's just the nature of the tournament. But certainly, this is going to be the hardest year, realistically, to pick this tournament. It's, sometimes it's just going to come down to one or two little things, but certainly, I still think it's going to be one of those top five that we normally are used to seeing. But again, even with that being said, this has been the year where conventional stuff goes out the window. You have to reevaluate how you would normally look at things because everyone has looked vulnerable at times. Kansas has, Oklahoma has, Michigan State has. I mean, it seems like at this point, Michigan State and Kansas is kind of being the consensus final pick for most people and that's kind of switching I've seen a lot of people with Michigan State I've seen a lot of people with Kansas but even with all that said of course that's the easy pick to go with here but Kansas has not done themselves any favors in the tournament the last two seasons Michigan State uh, Tom Izzo you have to look at his impeccable record of course there's not many coaches better in the tournament than him but based on the season that we've seen, based on some of the matchups that they might face, it's very difficult. It really is. I personally really like North Carolina. But even with North Carolina, like with everyone else, they've just had moments when you look back at their year as a whole where you're just uncomfortable circling them as your team to win. And now obviously we still have another a little bit more time to mull it all over and think it all over one more time. I'll do the final bracket breakdown show tomorrow in here right before Thursday's games. Um, but again, I still need time, and I think all of us still need time because you look at the way everything has gone. They're tough matchups. The 8-9 matchups largely, I think all of them are really one side. I really could go either way. They're very difficult matchups. They're upsets. Yale Baylor seems to be one of the ones in the making. A lot of people liking Yale. Personally, I haven't felt fully come to a, a firm conclusion on all my picks yet, but I do like Yale based on all the people whose recommendations that I trust, mostly from CBS Sports. I think I'm going to go with Yale for that one. But just across the board, there are so many interesting matchups here. Even ones like a West Virginia against a Stephen F. Austin. That's no cakewalk. There really is not many here that really you can go and have a great degree of certainty with. Even a matchup like Dayton-Syracuse. I really like Dayton. I think last year they really showed us beating Ohio State in the tournament. But Syracuse with Be with Beheim back, it it's a different team, and there are so many different things to consider here. And I just think end goal, you just have to look at it all. And I I got to be honest, I really think the West is one of those regions where we look at it and we haven't really evaluated in terms of strength the way other ones do. But I look at the West and I I think that we might be overlooking them a little bit. Of course, most people are probably going with Oregon and Oklahoma, uh, the two of them playing each other to get to the Final Four there. 
But Oklahoma, again, Oregon. Oregon is one of those teams where the selling card on them is they don't do things very conventionally. Well, when I hear that, normally when you don't do things conventionally, that means you're doing things unconventionally, and that's more ways to, to lose potentially. And certainly there are so many variables going into effect here, but it is probably going to be one of the five, one of the top five like it normally is. And it's just who else do you have getting to there? Because this year, more than any, I think you're going to see more upsets than we have seen. And it's certainly going to be a lot of difficulties trying to make these picks. But uncertainty has to be the word to define the tournament going into these games. And certainly, like I said, tomorrow I will have the full breakdown of the bracket one more time. Need to look it all over. Need to rethink it all because it, that's just the fun of the tournament this year. There, Nobody knows, and I think more than any other year, nobody really has any ideas. But until tomorrow, Jersey Joe Archino here with the Sports Fall. You can follow me on Twitter at Joe Archino and on Instagram, Jersey underscore Joe underscore Archino. And I'll see everybody next time.